It's time for Literacy Corner. We get to connect important ideas and texts. We get to delve into Tiger and Tin B, It's a Story, and Anna's Monsters, It's a Poem. Here they come. You're listening for The Problem, three specific details, and how the problem is resolved featuring those details. Here comes the tiger in 10B. <laughs> what was that? Terry asked his older sister, freezing in his tracks by the elevator door. It sounded like a tiger. Oh, come on, said Elsa. We're in an apartment building in New York City. <laughs> Run, yelled Terry, and they sprinted to their apartment at 10G, jumped inside, and slammed the door. Mom, there's a tiger in apartment 10B, shouted Terry. I highly doubt that, said Mom, since the only tigers in New York City are at the zoo. But Elsa wasn't so sure about that. New York City was a huge city where all sorts of people did all sorts of unusual things. And maybe some of them actually kept big cats as pets. Elsa had to investigate, so she borrowed Mom's phone and did a search. Yikes, she cried, seeing that there were lots of stories about wild animals in apartments. Could it be that only a few steps down the hallway there was a dangerous beast lurking behind the door to 10B? The next morning, Elsa went to the basement to ask the building superintendent about the tenant in 10B. New guy named Bledsoe said Mr. Garfunkel, filling a recycling barrel. Uh, I helped carry four giant bags of dog food to his apartment yesterday. Giant bags of dog food? Elsa said with a frown. Then why haven't we heard any barking? Elsa was sure she had a full-blown mystery on her hands, leading her to wonder, could one tiger eat as much as four dogs? Why not? Back on the 10th floor, as Elsa crept by 10B, she suddenly heard scratching sounds from the other side of the door like claws tearing at the metal. Elsa sprinted back to her apartment and slammed the door. Oh, for goodness sakes, said Mom. What now? There's definitely something scary in 10B. Don't be Silly, said Mom. Mr. Bledsoe, who just moved in there, is a very nice man, and in fact, he's just invited us for dinner tonight because he wants us to meet his new neighbors. We can't go. His place isn't safe, cried Terry. Elsa and her brother looked at each other nervously. Would this be their last meal? Mom just shook her head and chuckled. Hours later, when Mr. Bledsoe opened the door to welcome his guests... Elsa and Terry peered in as if expecting a wild beast to pounce at any second. Suddenly, a large dog jumped on Mr. Bledsoe and licked his head. The playful dog didn't exactly pounce or scratch, but it did let out a loud... (coughs) Mr. Bledsoe didn't have a tiger behind the door to 10B after all. He had a big bundle of affection. Elsa and Terry leaned in to get wet kisses from their not-so-scary new neighbor. What was the problem? What were at least three details? And how was the problem resolved? Share with your fellow listener. Next comes a poem. It's called Anna's Monsters. Your mission is to make an inference as to what the problem is and how that problem is solved. In other words, what is it that Anna's afraid of? I'm scared of the darkness. I don't care who knows it. I don't like the darkness at all. I sleep with the lights on, two lights in my room, and a much brighter light in the hall. I'm frightened of monsters that might come and get me whenever I climb into bed. My mother says, Anna, you're just being silly. The monsters are all in your head. But I don't think that's true because of what happened last night the first day of the week. I put on my nightgown, got under the covers, rolled over and heard a strange squeak. It wasn't a mouse and it wasn't a rabbit. It wasn't a dog or a cat. So I screamed out in terror. 
My mother came running. Whatever, she asked me, was that? I heard a strange noise, I explained to my mother. I was almost too frightened to talk. I knew it was monsters, some big hungry monsters. It was all I could do not to squawk. I don't like the darkness, I said to my mother. I don't like the dark and the night. Can't I sit up and get up and sit on the couch with you in a room that's all cheery and bright? Oh, Anna, Mom said, and she looked at me sadly. Do we need to go through this once more? Last night you assured me that you saw a monster. It turned out to be socks on the floor. But this one was real, I complained to my mother. I heard it squeak loudly and clear. I don't like the darkness. The monsters will eat me. Don't let them come anywhere near. My mother explained that the noises weren't monsters. She showed me some interesting things. For example, I learned that my bed makes a squeak when you push down too hard on the springs. So there weren't any monsters. They didn't exist. And I know that my mother was right. But what if those monsters that never existed come into my bedroom tonight? So what inferences do you make about what Anna is really afraid of? Not monsters. Share with your fellow listener. This marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another is coming soon. It too will be equally outrageous.